So th this is Soul Ash 2. Uh, Soul Ash 2 is a uh, very heavily adventure mode inspired roguelike, right down to the point where if you play a lot of Dwarf Fortress, this is going to look kind of familiar. I am of the opinion that it is good to imitate good art. Dwarf Fortress is good art, and I am absolutely okay with games imitating its ideas. You're going to see a uh, world generation that is very Dwarf Fortress like. Now, it's not anywhere near as in depth of world generation. It generates towns in a very similar way and time runs in a very similar way, but the maps don't have the same kind of height maps. There are some Z levels, but they're nowhere near as complicated. Uh, so kind of keep that in mind. I will say, if you are curious about this game, uh, go try the demo. If you're worried about a game like this getting finished, if for some weird reason, which this won't happen because he has like a year's worth of runway at least, uh, to keep working on it. If for some reason the game suddenly stopped being developed, um, the mod support is already enough to make this game worth purchasing. But that's me. Let's generate this world and uh, see what we land on. And then we'll start messing about. So what 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 you do is you, 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 you've selected your world. You, you, you've, you, you've picked everything. And then I think... We just click, we type in a name for it. So let's just call it Hello World. And this is why I say this looks like Dwarf Fortress. So this is your difficulty screen. So I will just simply read the bullet points here. Permanent character death. So when you die, you're dead. However, it does the adventure mode thing. And this is why I think this is really cool because there is almost no other games out there that do the adventure mode thing in this type of game. By that, I mean a traditional roguelike type of game. Or shall I say, a roguelike type of game. This is the default, where you can continue after you die. Uh, there's no penalty to skill gain. There's hardcore when you die, the world dies with you. So this is like your actual traditional roguelike mode, if you will. Um, Kind of like uh, proper roguelikes, like Tome. You know, you have your different difficulty levels. Easier ones let you respawn one or two th or three times, depending on the difficulty. And then there's that other difficulty where you can earn respawns, and there's the other difficulty where you just, like, you just respawn. This gives you several options, which I like. And then there's also High Fantasy, which is their easy mode, or, or like the, I guess, your tourist mode, which is uh, drops all items from your backpack and respawns you at the home settlement after death. It basically makes it into like a turn-based survival crafting game, um, which I I really like that this, is, that this is included for three reasons. I like it when traditional roguelikes have tourist modes. Um, I like it when traditional roguelikes, uh, you know, allow for human beings that aren't psychopaths to play their video games. And I like it when traditional roguelikes had those modes as well so that the psychopaths like me can learn to play the game without wasting their time. So we're just gonna play Dark Fantasy because that's the intended difficulty. And now I'm gonna talk about the, the, like the characters for a second. So when you, when you select your character here, we have humans, which live around 70 years. So when you start as a human, you start in your th like mid twenties. Years are a lot of time. It's like a hundred days, I think per year. Dwarves, dwarves live 200 years. Rasami, which is your furry cat people, live 80 years, which I'm covering now. Um, the elves live around 500 years, okay? The reptilians, which are also known as American presidents, uh, only live about 80 years. Bone wraiths, which ironically are not dead and um, live around 60 years. Uh, and then we have mushmen, which are... Uh, very, I, I know he has a resting bitch face. That ad is a very happy mushroom man. So now I get to decide what starting skills I want. Um, last time I think I just had an ax. Adventuring is neat, which is all about exploring. I kind of want to take a point in adventuring just because like exploring is good. Protection is a skill focused around entirely one single goal, not dying. I should, I want to be a, I, I want to be a steely thingy. Grumpo Spormon. It's like Rumpelstiltskin. So now we have um, several different options. We can join the Vinostasomp Cave, the 
pearl to my cave or the porcini tuft cave uh, we we are uh, a member of the Porcelainy Tuft uh, Cave has a mushroom population of 11. It is part of the Alamath State, and the settlement is led by Plerotus Slippery Milk Cap and is best known pr for producing pine log and spruce log, and uh, also mushrooms. And now we are in game. Um, I can also move with Wazd. Uh, this game does have directional facing, which I think is kind of CDDA. So the way the controls work is it's directional facing with Q and E, and then WASD. Kind of like Unreal World? Yeah, actually. I, I played the free version for a couple of hours and was like, wow, this is a lot. I need to try more of this later. And then bought it, because I wanted to give the developer money, and then I haven't played it since. The reason I think this game is super cool is this is a list of known entities. Very quickly, this turns into essentially Dwarf Fortress Legends once you start to have known locations, which I have a few, but I will get more. So I can literally look through the history of the events. So this is very simplistic because this game has been in development now, I guess, for like a year and a half, two years. So no, known locations. Currently, we are right here. We are in this location right here. Now... This is the history of the little location. It's not very long, because the world's been around for 100 years, and it only goes up to year 85 was the last thing that happened, where um, we had a caravan, which probably left to go somewhere else. But I can look at all of these other locations. I can look at this funny tree that's close by, which is, in fact, an elven location. Okay, well, is yeah, also you, you can meet a lot of stuff very quickly. You can meet a lot of people very quickly, too. You can find a lot of locations really quickly. The actual things that they can do in this is very simple. The speed that this game is developed at, at is borderline alarming. <laughs> um, and the mod support for this game is crazy. This could become something really interesting because of the amount of stuff he's gotten here already. When I say this game is adventure mode inspired, this is what I mean, is this game is taking a lot of ideas from Dwarf Fortress and implementing them extraordinarily quickly, but it's just the solo adventure side. There is like no fort building or anything. So I guess keep that in mind. This is like, you know, your skill tree, like your hot bar, stuff that you'll unlock. Um, we already have points of interest unlocked, which is which means that I can find things on the overworld. Um, and also I, I see it a full distance in the dark, but at half his distance during the day, I'm assuming that's because I am a mushroom. So during the day is nighttime. Uh, we have our gear screen and our leveling up. Um, so as we level up, I can level up strength, dexterity, endurance, intelligence, willpower. These are my number of available points, so I can put some points away. Let's level up our strength. Um, endurance improves physical resistances and lets me run more. We're, we're, we're putting points into strength and then points into endurance. And I'm just going to click go. And we've leveled up now. So that's our base stats done. So that's like something you should remember to do. But you know, you've got all your stats here, right? You can kind of you can kind of see everything. Um, we have we have some bread. We of course have our water skin. We have our pickaxe. Um, in our equipment screen, I think you can have two different equipment loadouts. This button. So we can have our main loadout, which is just going to be shield, our knife, and then if I go to the second loadout, I can put our pickaxe in. So we can swap between those in game. I think I don't know which hotkey it is. I'll have to check that. But and then we have the overworld. So this is where we currently are. We are we are right here, right? And now each one of these tiles is a map that is explorable. Um, they're not in interconnected like Dwarf Fortress. So when you hit the edge of the map, you see like arrows basically to then jump to the next map. Kind of like um, like a Caves of Cut or even like a like a, a stone shard or something. It's pretty simple, similar to that. Um, the original game was completely interconnected, but according to the developer, it was way too much dev time to upkeep and uh, kind of a pain in the ass. So I, I kind of don't blame them. Um, if you hit the edge of the map, you pop in elsewhere. So this mushroom house down here moves south and then you could actually like pop out up here i guess um so even if there's like a tiny little island like this i guess you would access it by leaving the map on this side so it, it loops basically uh so i can click on somebody and we can speak with them do you need something from us you, you've unlocked uh that this person is now somebody I, I i know about for existence so i can trade um and when i trade they, like this this is my family right so these are we, we have paralyzing mushrooms. Interesting. A wild 
paralyzing mushroom that might be edible. I wonder if that's edible to me. This is my family's like wealth. So I don't have access to that, which is actually behind my screen. 32,802, that is my family's wealth. Um, I have 20 bucks. I don't have the rights to this, but I can trade with them. They produce these, this, this person produces these mushrooms. I, I could ask for training. So for 60 bucks, they'll train me, they'll teach me athletics. Uh, I can ask for other trainers in town. They will give me directions on the map. Um, I could ask for directions to uh, something specific. So if I want directions to the settlement, um, I can uh, get uh, directions to the warriors. Um, not the video game, unfortunately, or the movie either. Um, let's see, what else do we have? We have the, the mushroom cutters, which I'm assuming is how they produce logs. Yeah. Uh, so as they produce these mushrooms, uh, they will accrue wealth, which will happen over time. If I was playing as dwarves, as an example, they'd produce, they'd be producing like, they, they grow mushrooms in farms, but they all, and farm various uh, materials, but they will also sell like ore, right? So it, because they're producing um, different materials, that that's what they uh, will then sell. So we can move around within this cave. I'm curious as to where the exit is. <laughs> But, uh, oh, I see. Huh. I was literally right next to it. That is the way up right there. <laughs> Can, I, did, I, did, I didn't notice it. There's also a way down right here. Okay, makes sense. So there's a tiny little ramp up. It's a little hard to see. I would like like a hot key to hit that. So if you hit leave region, you will just leave the map. If I talk to this person, there is no like quests or anything that they want me to do. So, cause none of that stuff's in the game but we can just click, click that button and leave them out. So we're gonna go visit the elves. Oh, look at that. On the way, I already found a, a point of interest. Well, let's get distracted. Adventuring, you'll find harder points of interest. The game took a second to load. We can see on the map, there's a question mark over there. So there's a point of interest and we can start adventuring towards it. Well, there's a deer. That's not, that's a funny looking spider. I could pick up a log. There's a deer that's stuck in the web. What is the question mark on the map? That is the point of interest that I just discovered, which is a webbed forest. Eh. So this... It's a moss man. So I can... Uh, I, I have a quick thrust, which is a, uh, a, a stabbing ability, which does that. I can uh, put up a shield wall which uh, stand your ground with shields raise, reducing incoming damage by five for three turn for three seconds worth of turns. I can also slam into things with shields and I guess he gone now. <laughs> okay. Um, up here we have uh, our stamina and our fatigue. So if I run out of stamina, I can't I can't move. I'm trying to remember what the hotkey is for rest until healed. Is it H? No. Uh, I see R. It's literally just R. So when I rest, I gain stamina back and we slowly gain fatigue. I need to sleep when fatigue gets too high. But combat's pretty simple until you get a couple abilities. I'm gonna shield slam you back. I like how much distance I get on that shield slam. When I went into this point of interest, it stated that it was easy. Meaning there aren't gonna be any high level enemies here and I can probably defeat them, basically. So like the game, is, the game gives you an idea of what you're up against when you enter the area, if that makes sense. Like it is pretty gamey like that, right? Something like, when you get an overall level, uh, you can level up your stats. I should have taken something that was more... I should have, like, built a character that was more, like, s stabby or something so that I would do more damage, which would get me through these earlier combat levels quicker, but... Skills, yeah. So adventuring levels up just literally by traveling around on the world map. That's how adventuring levels up. Protection here, as you can see, we, we've gained quite a bit of that. They all have their own skill trees. So if I look at protection, um, when I hit level 2, it just gives me... it makes it more efficient. We get Shield Slam at level 3, which we already are. Uh, we get an automatic parry chance, pa like defensive, passive, basically, when we hit level 6, which we started at because, or which, which we're already at, rather. We, we leveled that up, um, which we just gained. Uh, so the next two levels, I just get more stats, basically. And then uh, when we hit 9, we, we'll get a quick block, which is a maximum parry uh, for one second, which can go onto our, cool, on, onto our ability bar. So as you um, discover things on the overworld, you discover what's in that location. Wander around this non-point of interest area a little bit and see if I can discover some things. There's like generic trees. Can I harvest from that? I can. Okay. 
and gather stuff. And then whenever I hear that sound, we got two apples. Whenever I hear that sound, if I go back to the overworld, we now know there's apples here. So traveling, you see how much food it's going to cost or how much hunger it's going to cost you and um, how much thirst it's going to cost you. So this will bring us down to 57 hunger. Let's head to this elvish place, uh, which has foragers, a wood a wood bender. Oh, that's interesting. Um, a leather worker, forest gatherers, and guardians. So they do have soldiers. Peaceful mushroom man here to speak with elvish peoples because the town, it drops me into the middle right next to water. Um, this is a... I want to fish in their well and see what I catch. Um, because it's a town, this is like a survival thing. If it's a friendly town, it plops you into the middle of it so that if you're like about to die, you can immediately get some basic resources and, you know... I also like the fact that you can literally just attack anything. Also, cutting wood is forbidden here. That's typical. Very healthy. This is if fire fire a vine. I'm a mushroom. One very derpy boy. Also, if you are surprised about me associating with elves, you are very new here. I will associate with anybody until they attack me. I speak first, could attack later if they attack me. Greetings, friend. Are you curious about the wonders of the forest? I'm going to ask for trainers in town. What do you have around? They've got carpentry. By the way, these aren't Dwarf Fortress elves. These are just elf elves. Uh, they can teach me sword fighting, protection. Carpenter who works at Nims the... Let's... So I now have directions to their carpenter. Ah, there we go. We have a woodbender. Uh, each piece of wood tells a story. We aim to enhance that story through our craft. I could order a product. I could order leather, wooden barrels, firewood... Wooden sword, wooden shields. Could ask for training. They'll teach me carpentry for carpentry for sixty coins. To teach me the basics of carpentry. Could ask for other trainers. Can I just trade with them? They have mahogany wood, mahogany log, and elven wood. I don't want to know anything about your elven wood. Is that your elven wood, or are you just happy to see me? Clearly, it's my mushroom head or my very happy-looking face. <laughs> Notice how I'm not killing things, really, um, except for things that are way weaker than me. I'm just trying to break into areas and steal stuff and get out. The problem is, is they, well, they spotted me, but yeah, I can finally see again. If I had an axe, I could cut that wood. But no, I mean, like if I built a character and started with like, let's say pyromancy and axe wielding and protection, right? Um, and then I played as, I, I could I could play as this character or something else, um, put a bunch of points into strength, I'd be hacking the crap out of everything, right? It's because of the character that I'm playing. I have thieving, which is, you know, not the greatest for combat related things, especially against stronger enemies. I did a flip and I kicked you in the head on the way down. I'm sorry. Hey, that's something that I was looking for. Hey, what have we found? We have found sapphires. I found money. Also a little waterfall down here. You know, it, it's kind of funny. Uh, the look of this game is quite controversial. I've seen some people viscerally hate the little character icons because the first game had, like, sprites, basically. Like, they were static, but they were still little sprites. Chat room, to people who know, is that enough starvation to kill me? It says minus 100. <laughs> oh, I see. When starva Hold on. We're at starvation 2. When starvation reaches 4, you won't be able to travel on the world map. Okay, so we're, we're, we're okay for a little bit. Mildly hungry. I know, it's just mild case of, like, severe starvation. Started at the edge of town, which is... Hello, cat person. Trade with me. Do you have food for the love of anything that is edible? Well, I can get a bunch of... Uh, I, I can get some money from you. And uh, you have a lot of dates. I'm going to just assume that dates are edible. Sweet, chewy fruit is perfect snack for a traveler on the go. I will also... How much food is that? Food 15? I will just buy... And then as many dates as I can afford reasonably. <laughs> I just ate all, like most of them. There we go. So we, we are no longer starving to death. So this, this is this is good news. Congratulations, chat. We are no longer starving to death. I filled up my water skin. Dates with date salad and raw meats. <laughs> I go to known beings. These are all the people that we've met. Uh, like this person who we who we just bought stuff off of. Um, they're in the, the town of uh, Kuchasaka. And uh, they're actually a, they've been working at the Hunters, so they're a hunter. And uh, they, they, they're they married to a, a, an Emburrider? An Emburrider. Um, and maybe that's their name. And uh, this person's also worked at the Fiber Spinners pre previously. So this was that area where I was before. 
When did I get a pickaxe? I started with a pickaxe because I started with a, some skills in mining. So I can make copper in ingots, uh, which I require a smelter to do. So I need to find somewhere that has a smelter. Stonemason, engines, guardians, hunters, brewing, cheap ranch, weaponsmith, armorsmith. That would, yeah, that, that would imply that there's a smelter there. I'll get a little thirsty on the way, but we'll get water right there. So I can go all the way down to here. They should be friendly to me. And from there, we can figure out where their smelter is, and we can smelt this ore that I... Dugar Hardbane is now known to us. I'm going to ask for trainers in town. Oh, actually, no. I'm not, not going to ask for trainers in town. I'm going to ask for directions to the smith smelter. So now I've asked for directions. It's right there on the minimap. It m must be like one of the easier factions to start as because they just have all of this stuff. Hardbane, you oh, you're the tailor. Okay. I guess it's this. So let's cry because I'm starving to death again. Not the best materials to make weapons, but yeah. Okay, so, so what do I need to do this? I can make... I guess all of them. This takes fatigue. I I can never remember with games like this whether or not you have to open up the crafting screen to craft or if you can like just do it <laughs> by in, from the crafting from from like right clicking on it. Um, okay, so now it's like yo, I can make bronze, which requires copper ore and tin ore. I mean, I, I guess it depends on what your definition of simple is. <laughs> In, in the grand scheme of things, certainly, yes. But it's also a very, like, recent release, right? Like, it's been in development for, what, like, a year and a half now? And as a base for a new game, I think it's pretty freaking cool, actually. But I don't know. This is one of those games that I think is going to always suffer from, does this game need to exist? And I say, I want more games like this. There isn't enough games like this. So I want more games like this. I want different takes on similar ideas because that is interesting to me. But yeah, I mean, the gameplay loop for this is not the most insane thing ever by any stretch. And I think that is totally fine, at least for me. Guess uh, I need to get some skills in weaponsmithing before I can do it. So let's see. One of you has to be the weaponsmith, right? Yeah, you're, you're the weaponsmith. Um, can you train me? 60 bucks? Okay, we'll trade goods. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, now I've got 60 bucks. Sweet. So I will give you the money back now. Uh, the only way to start weaponsmithing is to loot and salvage weapons. All right, well, let's go loot and salvage weapons then. Yeah, generally if a game is like, oh, it's free to play. Eh. Oh, it's an, yeah, I'm out. Oh, has multiplayer connected? I'm out. But that's how you unsell me on a game in like a sentence is tell me that it has multiplayer. So we're going to go beat the crap out of somebody, steal their stuff and break it down. This person uh, looks like they had a really bad day. They came out of nowhere before anyone could do anything. Uh, we were under attack, and uh, I just want to go home now. Oh, wow. They actually have some information. They know where there is uh, a circus of blood, a snake pit, a jungle cave. Let's ask for the cave. Where's the cave? They've now given me the, ca the cave location on my world map. Thank you, person. At least these monkeys die way faster than the tree people. That's a wolf. Jesus. Shouldn't you attack the monkeys, too? Not a fair fight. I'm just a humble mushroom and... Good lord. <laughs> it just keeps getting worse. Okay, Ma make you go away. Rest real quick. Protection up. Okay, so wolves die way slower. A vegan wolf? I I don't think I'm vegan considering... I, I don't know where, where all these vegan jokes have come from with like the mushroom people don't eat meat. You guys are aware that, like, fungus grows on dead things, right? Like, you, you you do know this, right? They'll eat, like, mushrooms grow on literally everything. Like, they, they are literally, like, the corpse cleaner uppers of nature. I mean, I'm not talking about video games. I'm talking about just reality. But yeah, I I, I don't know where all these, like, where, where this, like, like uh, almost meme that you guys are, like, repeating constantly came from. But, like, what makes you think that mushrooms are vegan? <laughs> they're, they're vegan if a human eats them. Sure. You ignore reality here. Got it. Okay. Just, just, just double checking. I, I, I was just trying to figure out if this was a meme or if this was something you guys thought was real. Yes, I'm aware that dexterity increased knife damage. I read that in the UI. What are you? 
A bug. Alright. Chad, I found a bug in this game. We should report it to the developer. I don't think he would appreciate that if I actually did that. Is Elfie missing pets? I already killed all of the spiders, so I assume so. Uh, all of my VODs that aren't, like, offensive to YouTube, meaning all of my VODs that don't contain music are probably going to end up on that channel eventually, yeah. Or highlighted and put onto the main channel. Or both. Why? Ooh, that's, that's my goal. Got the stuff. I got three unspent points. Let's just go invisible. Oh, hey, I got another ability. Backstab. Uh, change position with the enemy. Oh, that's kind of useful. I just got a glowing crystal piece from mine. Let's try this backstab. Okay, so it's like swap places. That's fun. Gives us a little bit of utility. Let's slam you into the wall. Bonk. I could pop back over there. There's a something right here. Let's jump into here. Ground. Yeah, there are some Z levels, but the, this game is nowhere near as advanced as, as Dwarf Fortress. Uh, traveling on the world map uses a lot of food and water resources. You can gather water while it's um, crossing creeks. Actually, it's it's kind of funny. A lot of the negative reviews that I've seen for this game are literally just like, I'm confused by why I keep dying of thirst and hunger. It's literally because like traveling on the overworld uses a lot of hunger hunger and food and stuff. So you need to be consistently like either buying food from people or um, stopping and gathering. Moonlit moss, cow milk, and bear fur. But I can also mine. What are we getting from mining? Once I rest. Iron ore. Ooh. Not bad. 20 value. I'll take all of it that I can carry, at least. I mean, it is pretty punishing, at least in the early game. I'll say that when it comes to, like, food. But that's why you, if, if you don't want to have problems with that, train cooking, you know? Because that gives you more sustenance instead of just, like, basic berries. So these are topazes. I wonder if I can cut these gems or if these are already cut gems. I also wonder if they have any uses aside from... Oh, it get... Hm. So they, they give, like, electrical damage to weapons. These give light? So they're like weapon, they're like magic power-ups, basically. I wonder if a ruby makes the sword go faster, because it's red. That's the extent of my Warhammer knowledge. That's a gorilla. Hello, monkey. Hmm. It's not hitting me as hard as I thought it would. Well, I managed to stealth away from the gorilla and it lost interest and now it's walking away, which is kind of funny. I didn't think that would actually break its aggro, but it did. Because I went invisible and then like backstabbed and I guess that was enough to like make the gorilla forget I was there. Seems to be a bit of a pea brain gorilla, I suppose. Just walked right past him again. You would have imagined Ruby would be fired? Yes. Uh, that would that would make some sense. I could understand the Vigi game logic in that. I can't salvage those snakes because I don't have anything to cut them with. What is here? There's a fisher for just ooh. All right, let's let's go here. This is a desert Steve Saz. Oh, lizard people. This is Kwaiha Requar. Hello, Kwaiha Requar. Can we speak? You need something. I'm trying. I'm trying to look. Busy here. I don't want to know anything about your bussy here, okay? You have bird bones? Huh. Whoa! I can sell my topazes for a decent chunk of change. Uh, I, I need to ask for um, directions. So, like, if I started in this town, right, as a lizard person, and I started as somebody with mining skill, and I started in one of the families that had access to the mine, I could just start mining the family's mine without actually leaving town. Well, I will sell you this bear fur, because it's barely fur. This one's a keeper, if you insist. I will sell you the topazes. 275. Excellent. I don't think meat rots. Chat, does meat rot? I like that meat's cheap. 
I wonder why. Maybe it's because they have a surplus. Because, like, everything else is, like, very expensive, but meat's cheap. Days since last bra moment. Uh, minutes, more like. <laughs> anyway, I'm no longer starving, and I have 999 on my food scale, so that's good. But, yeah, eventually, like, as this game develops, I mean, right now it's mostly just a sandbox, but, like, as this game develops, it the, develop, the developer's roadmap for this game looks kind of rad. So, you know, I'm actually going to take a minute and just, like, pop open the roadmap and just kind of cover that because I think it's maybe worth looking at. Currently the the, the core features that they want to have. So this is just like, these are the things that, uh, here's the plan, I hope to add links to the sections but they don't work so uh, this will have to serve as a TLDR. So their core features they want to have. Um, and this is also the version that they're going to add them in. Uh, which for clarity's sake, we're currently sitting at 6.5 for the version numbers. Um, adventuring parties, so being able to have more than one person moving around in in game, I, I guess asking people to join you. Uh, settlement management, wars and conquest uh, events, which I think is like world events. Uh, story and victory conditions, so that's that's what they want to have for 1.0. Uh, they want to add pole fighting, hunting, as in like a skill for hunting, necromancy, which was in the first game, and unannounced skills and civil. Okay, so stuff that isn't there. Oops, where, where'd that go? Medium priority, a family system. So I guess being able to have kids. Uh, variety, more variety in points of interest. All you, although you can already mod more of those in if you want. Uh, boats, <laughs> playable vampires and liches. More skills, obviously. Multi-tile enemies is something that I think is really interesting. I'd love to see what that is. Uh, known monsters and a and crime system that works, which I don't think works right now. Um, I don't know what carts are. I'm assuming like mine carts, uh, marketplaces, a delivery service. So you can have like stuff shipped to you. I would assume, uh, uh other, uh, other translations and oh, I guess alternative tile sets. Hopefully that adds a little bit to what we currently have. Don't you need to cook meat? No, I'm a mushroom. No, you don't need to cook meat. I've been eating meat all the time raw. I think if you cook it, you just get higher amounts of food back. Trading carts. Oh, true. I was thinking my, my brain goes to mine carts, but DF roadmap versus soul ash roadmap. Nah, potatoes are delicious. I agree with this chief Maybe a horse-drawn cart? Oh, true. It might also be, like, travel carts, too. Like, a fast travel system or something. Using less food. I don't know. We'll see. Um, ask for directions. I need your smithy. So I can forge up my iron. I'm suddenly cons... Oh, they're... Because, they're, like, I keep bumping into things in here and, like, squelching sounds. And it's, like... I guess the edge of the map is just, like... Squelchables. Oh, can I not make iron? Not, can I not smelt iron? Do I not have enough skills yet to smelt iron? Oh, that's interesting. I can upgrade my items if I get magic ingredients. So Circus of Blood, I guess, is just like a, a, a death cult. <laughs> that or it's just a bunch of Dwarf Fortress players manifesting in other video games. Can I do anything with the letter? I guess I can just read it. Storytelling, I suppose. Pool of Blood... I'm going to swap positions with you. Wow, that does quite a bit of damage. I backstab. It's like 20 damage. What are you? Okay, Skeleton Archer. And it also, my backstab breaks aggro? That's interesting. Well, let me try something real quick on this next guy right here. So I'm going to backstab with you. Okay, so that didn't break aggro. It did with the other, maybe, actually, hold on. I'm gonna try this again. Backstab into the bush. Okay, no, that still doesn't break. Weird, why did it break aggro then? Right, I can take the crude short bow. That's my, my goal, what I'm looking for. Let's see what we get. Bison leather and some linens. There's also a blood fountain, which is a source of infinite blood. I can't do anything with the blood fountain. There's a Iron Maiden. It's playing 666, the number of the beast. Um, on repeat, you, you can't get around number of the beast. Uh, as inside the blood spikes, it drains the blood of its victims while keeping the unlucky being alive. So I kind of wanted to just check in with this game, but if you're interested in trying this game out, there is a demo for it. Uh, he does he does update it quite frequently. Um, I think that this game is already worth it purely because of the mod support, which is identical to the first game and fantastic. 
The first game's mod support was excellent. It runs at its own engine. It has a mod editor. You can like edit assets and like all kinds of crazy shit. Um, you can create your own um, encounters for the like, like you know those uh, points of interest with little question marks? You can create those and just straight up make them. And there's like mods in the workshop where you can download more.